What's going on everybody? I'm back with another video. This video is going to be looking at Pep Guardiola's tactics in the Eng English Premier League versus Leeds United and Jesse Marsh. So before I get into the tactics behind the match, I'm using Keyframe to make this video. Check out both my books and my new tactics course in the links in the description below. All that is in the description. And now let's get right into the tactics of the match. So Pep has gone with an interesting setup the last two matches. With a makeshift back three forming with Ake on the left and John Stones on the right. John Stones, John Stones is taking up a wider position than he usually does in a much deeper role. Which is interesting in the tactical dynamics that it caused in the match and the problems it caused for Leeds United and even some problems it caused for Manchester City in possession of having a player so wide and a little bit disconnected but we'll see the purpose behind that in just one second. Nathan Ake played a little bit more narrow role to control transitions in the left half space and played more attached to Akanji. So this would see their right fullback inverting as he did the last match as well in the Carabao Cup in their cup match midweek and we'll see why now. So now the two holding midfielders made up of the inverted right back and Rodri would stagger their positioning with the idea of trying to create this skewed triangle, skewed triangle to create third man concepts and create superiority or draw out a midfielder from Leeds United. As we see here, if he were to jump, there would be space for Kevin De Bruyne in behind. So this was the idea to try and attract more players to the first and the second line, especially after Leeds United for forward line would press. Now Leeds, they, they played in a 4-3-3 when they were playing their mid block and looked to win the ball. Then deeper on, it would look more of a flat four midfield with one player dropping as the left side midfielder. So for Leeds United we see their 4-3-3 here with Aronson as the central most attacking player with a very narrow front three which then caused Pep to move towards wider central defenders to try and stretch these front three into wider areas which they didn't have too much success in doing in detaching these players in the wide areas from their central connections. So. Leeds United did a good job shifting into the wide area, maintaining these horizontal connections with their players, and not allowing these breaking connections for Manchester City to access the central players. Now, obviously they weren't perfect throughout the match, and they did give away some key chances, but mainly the chances came through transition moments, and in moments they couldn't counter-press or adequately get behind the ball. So now for Manchester City's concepts, we're going to look at players from their holding midfielder positions dropping deeper and forming a single pivot and how they attract players from this midfield line to jump which then create dangerous space for Gundogan and Kevin De Bruyne to then access these spaces and then get further in behind the Leeds defense. So as we see early on in the match, Pep Guardiola's team played with John Stones very wide, Ake closer to the half space and their midfield four Gundogan just off our screen here forming forming a midfield box. Now Kevin De Bruyne, he would fan out into wide areas as as he usually does to try and create free options around the opposing team's block because of the very compact midfield shape. There was space in the wide area so Kevin De Bruyne would shift into the wide area but this caused a gap in their structure and with too many players in the wide corridor we would have Mars making inverted runs but with Kevin De Bruyne moving into these wide areas it created too many vertical passes in the wide area for Manchester City to be successful and Leeds it gave them an easier time shifting into these wide spaces so they were able to maintain their horizontal and vertical compactness when they would shift across and into the wide area. They'd match up well against this Manchester City side and they didn't have too much success seeing Kevin De Bruyne in these wider areas, at least in their offensive organization phase. So in the moments they did have success, we see Rodri dropping alongside Akanji, John Stones off our screen to the right, and Nathan Ake moving higher up the field in wider positions. This left their inverted fullback as their lone holding midfielder and by playing first line passes they were able to attract midfielders from Leeds to jump with John Stones drawing out just enough the wide midfield, midfielder from Leeds into a wider position that allowed 
for Manchester City to open up these passing angles into Kevin De Bruyne. Now in this exact moment, if you go back and rewatch, it's going to be a bad technical action by Akanji, not able to find this pass, but this is where they could be most dangerous and finding these key areas with Kevin De Bruyne with the ability to turn and play free between the lines which is what Manchester City are all about. Now where they didn't have too much success or Leeds United got the better of Manchester City is when they didn't disrupt the midfielders and the midfielders were able to shift into the wide area have relatively good cover between the lines for Manchester City forcing Manchester City to try and play more direct or more vertical with players like Holland running in behind but with good presence around the ball we also see their ball oriented pressing with these Leeds players on the inside of the passing lanes of the Manchester City connections so this would then lead to very well established offensive transitions with these Leeds players on the inside and the ball side of these Manchester City players it could promote a very progressive form of transitions and with good individual actions when finishing the press it gave Manchester City some problems but also gave Leeds some problems of their own when Manchester City would win it right back and the team would be opened up so it created good possibilities for them but also hurt them in the end as well now the last instance we're going to talk about is Leeds counter pressing so we have our fullback jumping here because Jack Grealish is so deep in their own half we have midfielders jumping on and the front three pressing the ball with midfielders jumping into wide areas. So by getting so many players around the ball and being more ball oriented, as we see they cut off the passing angle and then go and press the ball. So after Ake is in the cover shadow of Aronson, he goes to press Jack Grealish the ball carrier. So they have more than one player pressing the ball. And meanwhile the players on the weak side or out of the play are looking to close down outlets or support the press using his cover shadow and get closer to be more of a ball oriented counter press. And this is where we're going to wrap up the video so I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.